Hello, dear viewers. I'll be giving this lecture. I'm Shoshanin Alexander Yuryevich, Chief Physician of the Clinic Health of the 21st Century. And today, we'll talk about a disease that used to be considered incurable, namely atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a disease that is widespread among the older population groups, that is, past the age of 40 or older. There are cases of the early onset. We won't talk about them today. Atherosclerosis is a silent killer, as they say. It affects blood vessels mostly. This disease progresses until vascular occlusion occurs. Blood vessels become obstructed in the heart or brain, resulting in heart attacks and strokes. A very large number of people die from this disease every year, and accordingly an even greater number of people suffer from this disease. It all ends up in both the coronary heart disease and the deficit of blood supply to the brain due to atherosclerotic plaque in the arteries of the neck and in the arteries of the brain itself. That is, this is a metabolic disturbance, the type when cholesterol isn't metabolized properly, it's not used as intended by the nature. Instead, cholesterol accumulates and is deposited in the blood vessel walls. I'll go briefly over the evolution of the treatment methods for this disease. It all started when people realized that this disease should be treated, at their level of understanding, rather primitive at the time, as to how the disease develops and so on. At the time, the consensus was that cholesterol accumulates in the vessels because people consume it with food. In the middle of the last century, that type of thinking gave shape to a movement against food containing cholesterol. As a rule, they included fatty foods into this group too. Even though we're all used to hearing that cholesterol is fat, cholesterol is by no means fat. We'll come back to that in detail later. It's true. This substance is very often found in the food that also contains fats, and people started associating cholesterol with fat, so they think cholesterol is fat, yes. So a lot of people switched to fat-free diets, that is, they stopped eating fat, fatty foods that contain a lot of cholesterol. They were trying to prevent cholesterol from entering the bloodstream. That was the end of the last century. But that did not lead to good clinical outcomes either. What it all boils down to is that people cut the fat out. A lot of them are still on fat-free diets, even today, to no effect. Later, it was discovered that, in fact, cholesterol isn't only consumed with food, it's also produced directly in the organism. That is, 80% of our cholesterol daily requirement is synthesized endogenously, that is, inside the body, and only 20% comes from food. So, contemporary opinion leaders among scientific schools are shifting away from fat-free diets, because they are, well, quite useless. It's obvious, what matters more, the 20% or the 80? Now the trend is to inhibit the synthesis of cholesterol, mainly in the liver, and in other organs as well. The bulk of cholesterol is synthesized in the liver, but not exclusively there. Special metabolic drugs called statins inhibit the synthesis of cholesterol. They stop the process in the liver. And so they started to use statins for these purposes. Unfortunately, statins didn't turn out to be as miraculously effective as we thought they would be. People who take statins to this day, who have been taking them for years, still cannot get rid of plaque deposits. Their only positive effect, and even that's not always the case with statins, is that you can slow down the growth rate of plaque a little bit. But to reverse the process, to make plaque go away, is not possible with the help of statins. So, atherosclerosis cannot be cured or stopped as of today.
And yet, if a person suffers from this disease, he or she ends up in a situation when one of the plaque deposits, and by then the deposits have already spread throughout the body, begins to block the vessel to the heart, so people get operated on heart surgery, bypass surgery, stenting, so they try to remove plaque surgically, in one way or another. It could be plaque in the cervical region in carotid arteries, and then the flow of blood into the brain is disrupted. That's also a frequent operation site. The science keeps pushing, of course. The results are not impressive. We still have to operate. We do extend patients' lives this way. But as you already understand from what I said before, atherosclerosis as such is a metabolic disease, something that cannot be cured by surgery. Surgical intervention allows a person to live longer, but it's not a good solution to stop the disease. Over the years that I've been observing this practice and studying this disease, my colleagues and I developed a system for a special lifestyle, so to speak, which helps to stop it at any stage of atherosclerosis. I'll repeat here, at any stage. And I'll even go further, it can help reverse the disease. But to do it successfully, you need to understand the theory foundations. When I was developing the therapeutic lifestyle to stop and reverse atherosclerosis, I sought like-minded colleagues among scientists for a long time. It was quite difficult to find true kindred spirits in our science, but I managed to find a remarkable scientist, a Russian biophysicist, who had lived in Holland for a long time. He is my employee now, in my clinic. He deals with just this very lifestyle, in terms of nutrition. Because, oddly enough, proper nutrition is the basis of this lifestyle. As I mentioned before, the focus was on nutrition initially, and then, later, we moved away from that. And now, we're returning to nutrition, but from a different scientific point of view. So, at the time, when we understood how the body worked, now that we knew the basics of cholesterol metabolism in the body, we developed a special nutrition system. We called it thermodynamic therapeutic nutrition, which we successfully apply in our clinic. What does cholesterol metabolism look like, and what's this process altogether? What does it do for us? Okay. In the last century, one famous Russian surgeon, he was a member of the Russian Academy of Sciences, his name was Viktor Sergeyevich Savelyev, developed a concept called the lipid distress syndrome. That is, this is a violation of lipid metabolism in the body. So, let me give you a layman's definition of this complex concept, the lipid distress syndrome. We'll translate that as a compromised liver function, a scientifically proven fact. Dysfunction of the metabolism of lipids, and that means fats. The synthesis of bile and its secretion from the liver, this is a very important point, we'll talk about that. And the circulation of bile acids, the natural mechanism of cholesterol homeostasis. Homeostasis here is metabolism. So, our outstanding academician Savelyev discovered this concept and introduced it not as a separate disease, instead he aggregated a whole group of pathologies into one disease. This is both atherosclerosis and gallstone disease. And from history, we know that cholesterol was identified in gallstones for the first time. Chronic pancreatitis is also included here, because the pancreas suffers in a certain way when it's dysfunctional. It's located next to the liver, and pancreatic juice and bile from the liver exit into the intestine through a single fatherous papilla, that is, through the duodenum. And if the bile is of poor quality, then reflux occurs and the pancreas is affected. And the so-called fatty hepatosis, which was called so because there are changes in the liver when bile acid metabolism is impaired. Fat starts depositing in the liver cells. Also, in this condition, 
bile stagnates in the ducts of the liver, which is visible during the ultrasonic scan. The sonographer would see that the liver is becoming kind of fat. It's worth saying here that it's not just fat that is involved in changing the density of liver tissue, but also the retention of bile in the bile ducts. So where is all this going? This is a scientific point. Could be a bit of a challenge, but we need to understand what clearly follows from this slide. Atherosclerosis is not an independent, standalone disease. It is a disease that belongs to the group of other diseases that are essentially one condition. Liver dysfunction. The highlight here is that the liver is dysfunctioning. So, when more and more bile is retained in the liver, and liver keeps producing bile, bile cannot exit into the intestine and fulfill its digestive function accordingly. And so it accumulates. Well, of course, as I mentioned already, stones are formed. It's the logical outcome when bile stagnates in the bile ducts. Okay, in severe cases, by the way, we have to use special procedures for cleansing the liver. That happens when we understand that simply changing your lifestyle won't help you deal with this on your own. It's progressed too far. And here we need a classical medicine intervention. So there. But that's a specific case. But in general, you need to understand that, well, there is nowhere to go for cholesterol. And now it is ejected into the bloodstream from the liver. Kind of a reflux back into the bloodstream. So the blood receives unprocessed bile that hasn't been fermented in the intestines. These bile acids and so on, which are essentially low-quality substances, low-quality product, enters the bloodstream. Lipoproteins, these hard workers, they snap to action. They try to capture this stuff. They try to carry it somewhere, but because their target is of poor quality and accordingly they can't transport it well. That is, under certain conditions it happens so that they enter into the wall of the blood vessel. And so plaque starts forming. That is, it penetrates the endothelium, we'll go over that now. The endothelium is what covers the wall of the vessel from the inside. And plaque formation starts under it, that's how it occurs. We need to understand a few things here. Plaque is such a formation, well, it's not like there is a vessel like a tube and there is some kind of plaque lodged inside. So people get scared. They say, what if it detaches with the bloodstream? It'll go somewhere. A vessel might get clogged. Well, no. For blood to tear off a piece of plaque from the wall, well, I haven't seen such cases when plaque detaches on its own. That is, the plaque itself is under the endothelium. It cannot be torn off by the blood passing by. So no need to be scared of that. But when the plaque gets thick, the endothelium that covers it could get damaged. The plaque is acidic in its contents and the blood is alkaline. Their exposure to each other activates thrombus formation reaction. That is, this tendency of blood to form blood clots in places of vascular damage. Well, so a blood clot forms, and that's the thing that can get detached. That's how plaque is dangerous. By itself, it cannot come off, but a blood clot, if it forms on top of the plaque, it can come off, and indeed clog vessels, and lead to disability, or patients can die from it. Here's how that happens. Absolutely all sources I know say that cholesterol-carrying lipoproteins enter the vessel wall under the endothelium. But an explanation as to why they go there, an exhaustive explanation as to why that occurs is very hard to find. Why do they penetrate the walls? And that's what I wanted to share with you. The main reason for that is the force of arterial pressure during a pressure jump or with constant pressure, which kind of pushes these lipoproteins in there. That is, provided there is lipid distress syndrome, even if the pressure is normal, plaque will gradually form. We're talking about a combination here, a balance of these two factors, hypertension, and we talked about that already, and the disbalance of bile acid metabolism, atherosclerosis, that is. 
That's the interaction to understand. So what happens here? Here you see bile retention in the liver. Then the primary bile is discharged into the bloodstream. You can see that here. Further on, lipoproteins cannot effectively pick it up, transfer it, because the composition of the bile is wrong. And they do pick it up. But, well, they cannot take it where it belongs, yes. And if at the same time a jump in pressure occurs, then at the locations where vessels branch out, it's written here, under high pressure, lipoproteins penetrate the vessel wall in the locations of divergence, microtrauma and places where vessels bend. And that's our combination, exactly. Vessels branching, microtrauma and the bending of the vessel, accompanied by high blood pressure. Plus, impaired bile acid metabolism. Taken all together, it leads to this. Yes, atherosclerotic plaque begins to form in these places. That's the mechanism. You need to understand that physical activity must be an inseparable part of your lifestyle. If only to ensure that these very lipoproteins in our blood go faster, better, so that they could deliver cholesterol to the destination organs, tissues and cell membranes more efficiently and faster. That is, physical exercises and physical activity are simply the most vital healing factor in the lifestyle and we recommend adopting them in order to fight atherosclerosis. So, regarding physical exercises, I will speak in more detail here. We must realize that physical activity should be an inseparable, constant factor in the fight against atherosclerosis. What that doesn't mean is that you exercise for a week and atherosclerosis is done and over with. Of course not. This disease develops over the years. It has to do with metabolism. This disease is a metabolic disorder, in this case a metabolic disorder of cholesterol and its derivatives, the bile acids. This disease, which has been developing for so long, cannot be cured by any short-term physical exercises. And moreover, physical exercise alone cannot cure it. But physical activity, per se, because of improved pickup and transport and so on and so forth, plays a very big role, one might say, one of the key roles. Subscribe to our channel and never miss a new video. Click subscribe under this video. Once you clicked it, you are subscribed. Click or tap the bell to receive notifications about our new videos to your email. Click on all to receive all notifications. In the description below, you will find the links to all the projects by Dr. Shoshanin. Dr. Shoshanin's Club for X Patients. Dr. Shoshanin's videos. Set up an appointment for a free consultation at the clinic. And stay healthy.